Hey guys, so the feedback to my last Figma tutorial on glass morphism and the credit card design was so positive that many of you actually asked me to follow up on this with something else that you can do that's also simple enough and can be done in a couple of minutes. So I'm actually going to use a lot of the elements that we've built before. So if you didn't finish that tutorial yet, I suggest you do that now. So I'm just going to remove everything but the background and the card. Now I'm going to make the background frame a square and make sure it's a perfect square. So I'm just going to type the height the same as the width. And then I'm going to take the gradient from the background and just stretch it down. We're going to be making a simple floating iPhone shot. So I'm changing the card layout to 375 by 812, which is a standard iPhone resolution. One other trick that you can do to make the stroke look even more natural is actually changing the fill of the stroke to a linear gradient and have it fade out towards the bottom of the shape. So as you can see the top has just a little bit of opacity on the stroke, on the line around the shape and the bottom has almost none. Now today I just want to make a simple iPhone screen of an imaginary platform for designers and I'm gonna base it off on our dribble shot from over a year ago. But first I'm gonna create some red helper squares that are gonna be 32 by 32. And I'm gonna duplicate that square and place it on the other side so we now have our left and right margins set. And I'm gonna start by writing a hello message from the app to you. So my goal here is to create a header and three distinct sections underneath. I'm gonna start by creating an add new article text field. And I'm gonna just keep the corners at about eight. Now let's change the background color to white and I'm gonna move the helper squares away. Make sure that both the label and the text field are 32 points from the left side. Now I'm gonna duplicate the label, make it smaller, about 16 points, and write the placeholder label for the text field. Now you can press 5 on the keyboard to quickly decrease the opacity of the placeholder. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now I'm gonna duplicate the label from the top and I'm gonna create the next section which is gonna be for friend invites. For both speed and consistency, we're going to be reusing and recycling a lot of the objects that we already have. So I duplicate the text field and then I make it a vertical rectangle that will serve as a profile picture of the people that I want to invite. My goal is to have two of those rectangles on the screen and one of them sticking out a little bit. And since we used 32 as the main margin, I'm going to use 16 as the margin within this section. So it's going to be 16 points between the cards and one of them is sticking out behind the screen. Now I'm duplicating the label again and I'm making a section of recommended articles for you. Articles are going to be full width, so I'm duplicating one of our rectangles again and I'm making it full width, just making sure that it's 32 points from the left, from the right and from the bottom. We're going to be making proper alignments for everything later, but I'm just quickly moving things a little bit closer together so I can know how much space I have to actually work here. Now I'm pasting in three random profile photos from Unsplash, but I'm making sure they have a similar vibe, so similar color palette, similar color scheme, and pretty similar backgrounds. It's gonna make it a lot easier. So in short, they must fit well together. Now, to add a little bit of consistency to the photos, I'm creating a rectangle on top of them and making sure it has the same corner radius, and I fill it with a gradient that's basically a part of our background here, so it needs to blend in with the background a little bit. And I play with the opacity of both ends until I'm satisfied with the result. And now I'm duplicating it to cover all the other photos the same way. Now I duplicate our overlay rectangle again. I make it a little bit smaller and I move it to the bottom of the photo. And make sure to actually decrease the border radius to zero on the top two corners. Here I'm using the same color palette but I'm making the colors a little bit darker. It's gonna be an overlay that's gonna make the text stand out better on the photos. And of course then I duplicate it to all the other photos. And as you can see it's starting to look more consistent already. Now I'm gonna paste in some random article image for our recommended article section. And as our quick and dirty way to add the overlays to the photos created a lot of layers, I'm grouping it for clarity. Now we need a little bit more space for the title of the article, so I'm moving everything up. Now I duplicate the rectangle with the photo inside, and I make sure that I pick the one that's on the bottom of the layer list, and I'm changing the image to solid fill with a pure white background. Now it's all about simply moving it down or stretching it down to actually create a little bit of white space for the title. 
Now I take the photo and I change the corner radius of the two bottom corners to zero. Okay, now I'm adding the title and the author and obviously the title is gonna be bigger. To make it all fit, I'm gonna stretch the white background a little bit down and then I'm gonna move everything up to actually still have the 32 points of space from the bottom. Now, since we already have a nice ratio of title to subtitle, I'm actually copying both the title and the subtitle and pasting them onto the profile pictures. And I'm just gonna create names for everybody and some job titles. And I'm just gonna use the letter A as the base for all the names for like internal text consistency. So everybody's name will start with a letter A. Now I'm gonna make the overlay gradient on the photos a lot darker and I'm gonna change the text to white. But make sure that the gradient is not black. It still needs to be basically made from the colors from the background just a lot darker. Now you can copy the properties of that gradient and then paste them onto the other photos. And don't forget to change the font color as well. I'm gonna pick the full photo overlay and I'm gonna paste it on top of the article photo as well to actually add this little vibe of color to it. Now it's getting a little bit too cluttered for my taste. So I'm going to actually decrease the font size of the labels back to 16. And if you watched my previous tutorials or read the book, you probably know that the font colors cannot be fully black. That's because of some contrast issues. And to make them blend in with the interface a lot more, I'm just gonna pick a very dark shade of a color that comes from our background. So in this case, it's gonna be a very dark purple. And then I copy that color onto all the dark fonts on the screen. Depending on the photo that you picked for the article, you might actually have to play around with the contrast, the saturation and the photo temperature to actually match all the other photos. So I'm just gonna make some small adjustments here. Now let's duplicate the top label and let's finally name our app. And I'm gonna copy and paste the properties from the smaller labels onto the hello one as well. Alright, time to recycle some shapes again. So I'm duplicating the text field into a small square and this is gonna be the profile picture. So I'm making it a little bit smaller and I'm pasting in a profile photo. And for now I'm also gonna move that same overlay that we have on all the photos on top of that photo as well. Now it's time to do some alignments. So I'm duplicating our helper square and I'm making it 16 by 16. So the idea here is to use 32 point distance between the sections and then 16 within the sections. That's gonna make a nice hierarchy and a nice grouping. And make sure to align those squares to the baseline of the font and not to the bounding boxes. Okay, now time to add some color to the design. So I duplicate the main card from the very background and I'm making a smaller version of it near the top. The idea is to overlap the text field about in the middle. And then I decrease the corner radius of the two bottom corners down to zero. Now let's pick a nice colorful linear gradient for the top header. The header is not gonna be transparent so we can remove the background blur effect from it. Since the background is dark, I'm gonna change the text on it to white. Now this gradient is pretty okay, but I'm gonna make a more colorful version of it. Okay, now time to add some depth to this project. So I'm adding a shadow under the profile photo. So the first thing I do is to pick the color of the shadow to be actually something coming from the background, but a little bit darker. And on a background like this, the overlay on the photo is not gonna be necessary anymore, so I'm removing it. Yeah, this is a very freestyle build of me just playing around with shapes and objects and this is actually how you can practice and have fun at the same time. So to make a softer shadow I'm increasing the Y value and I'm making the blur value double the Y value. So it's gonna be 8 and 16 and then I'm gonna decrease the opacity of the shadow a little bit. Now let's do the same thing with the input box. This time I'm gonna pick a different color more from the background of the actual app and this shadow is not gonna be as big so it's just gonna be blur 8 and Y value equals 4 and then I'm gonna decrease the opacity to about 30 or 20, whatever you feel works better. And once we have a nice shadow, it would be obvious to actually copy it to the profile photos of those three people as well. But the problem is that the card on the right is only slightly overlapping the screen. So it wouldn't really cast a shadow over an empty background, that just looks plain wrong. So once you have the right shadow value, make sure to remove that shadow from the photo on the right, because we need to do that one manually. So I'm gonna make another object actually cast the shadow under the photos. So I'm duplicating our text field again and placing it under the photos. And I'm just gonna paste the shadow onto this object, duplicate it three times, but the last one under the photo on the right is gonna be a lot smaller, so it's only gonna take the space that the photo is actually overlapping onto the screen. And we can also paste the properties of that shadow onto our card with the article. 
And in this project, we're also going to be creating those spheres in the background and in the foreground to make this a little bit more interesting, but also to make the whole glass morphism element shine through. Just create some circles and fill them with a linear gradient. And the gradient should actually be coming from the background. So make sure that the bottom of the circle is a darker shade and then the top is a lighter one. And of course, place them below the glass morphic card so the effect is still going to be visible. And if that shape is barely visible from under the glass, you might have to adjust the background blur or the opacity of our glass morphic card. Now you can duplicate the sphere, make it bigger or smaller and place it somewhere else on the screen. But this time for the right side, I'm actually gonna change the colors of those spheres to match the background color on the right side. So it's a little bit more purple here. Now play around with the sizes and the position of them until you're fully satisfied and make sure to actually add a couple of those spheres to the front of the card as well. And for the ones in the front, we can actually use our oval technique to create a realistic looking shadow. So I'm making a small oval, making it dark and then adding a layer blur effect to it. Now make sure that the blurred oval is under the sphere but it's still above the header image that it casts the shadow onto. Now you can duplicate it and make the same effect with the other ball. Let's now duplicate the spheres and add a couple more of them in different sizes and different positions here. I'm also gonna duplicate them and make a couple of smaller ones and add a layer blur to them as well that will create the bokeh effect. So by having some of them fully sharp and some of them blurred in the background and smaller, it's gonna make it look more 3D and more natural. And repeat the same thing on the other side. And there you have it, 15 minutes and you actually can have a nice glass morphism looking iPhone screen with a project. And of course you can still refine it. This is like a very simple, very quick way to have a starting point for a proper design. So it only shows you what you can do in about 15 minutes of playing around. So that's it for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers!